What is going on guys? In this video, we are going to go over my updated Stamina Templar build for the Blackwood patch. I've been testing Stamina Templar for quite some time, but I haven't really found a Stamina build that I can really put my name on it until this one. The others were just kind of lackluster. They all, like needed a little bit more sustain. They needed a little bit more damage or tankiness. I think we found the sweet spot for all of that. So this build has some insane burst potential. Like when I tell you like Stamina Templar has some insane burst, like I'm not joking. This build has like burst potential like a one-shot Stam Sork or like a, a Stam Line Blade. This is how hard this thing hits. It has great sustain. Uh, your stamina sustain is top notch. You have close to 3000 recovery, not even including rune focus. We have some great healing power. Probably one of the best builds that I've had for healing potential because uh, we have so much weapon damage. Our, our vigor and our rally, our, you know, our vigors are ticking like 3k. Um, just getting insane healing that really increases our survivability. And most important in this patch, I think, is speed. We have this is like the fastest Templar you've ever seen. I'm not even joking. Like we're like the flash with this build. Nobody can really keep up with this and we can really kite in line of sight, spread people out. And it's honestly just the best thing to have in this burst meta because you can, you know, spread people out and then you tear their hairline off with a crescent sweep right into jabs. So Stamina Templar is one of the harder classes, I think, to play of the Stamina classes simply because their offensive main spammable is a channel. Uh, which kind of leaves you susceptible to getting bursted yourself while you're in that because you can't be healing yourself uh it's not as easy as using surprise attack or dizzy swing there is advantages to using jabs in certain scenarios but for the most part you know you're pretty open to getting bursted yourself overall with a lot of my builds this patch i went for more of a simple approach to damage not trying to stack so many skills up just using two or three main skills to really do all my damage I feel like if you have four offensive skills and with like a back bar skill like Kyle Trops or something like that, I feel like it just makes it too complicated and you feel like you have to have all your 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 AOEs down or, or whatever to really go offensive and that's not the case. If you can really beef up one or two skills and you're gonna be just slapping people like crazy in this high burst meta that we're in. This is built for all types of PvP content, Cyrodiil, Imperial City, and Battlegrounds. I run the exact same build for all types of content. Doesn't matter, I don't change anything. Uh, this is just an all-around all universal build for PvP. This video will cover all the typical topics, gear, skills, champion points, and much more. To understand this build fully, please do watch the whole video. Timestamps are down below if you guys wish to skip ahead, as well as other important links. If you guys want to watch me play this build live, I do stream on Twitch. I kind of changed my days around a little bit, but now I'm streaming on Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at like 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely come by the stream and check out the build. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and you guys will never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to smash that like button. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So just like on all of my build videos, we're going to go over the race, the Monday Stone, and consumables. So for my race, I'm an orc. I think this is by far the best race. Uh, a thousand stamina, a thousand health. Whenever we deal damage, we get health back, and we gain 258 weapon and spell damage, and reduce the cost of sprint and increase our movement speed bonus of sprint by 10%. So this is a fast class. You know how we're running the spec. We're pretty quick, uh, quicker than most people. So this swift warrior definitely helps. Uh, the main reason why we are an orc though was for the weapon damage and the health. There's not another race that gives you health and weapon damage in the same thing. You could go dark elf, but you're going to have a little bit less health. You're going to have more max magic though. Uh, I really don't like the dark elf though. It's just not my preferred race. Um, this health, the, the healing that you get whenever you deal damage is underrated, I think. Uh, it goes under the radar a little bit, but definitely it's noticeable once you swap to an orc. Other races that do work, I think Imperial is a solid option. You're just going to have a little bit less damage. Uh, Khajiit, I'm really looking at Khajiit next patch. I'm uh, looking at running possibly Mechanical Acuity, even on this build, on this patch right now. Mechanical would be really fun to run with a Khajiit. I've ran this before. Uh, definitely could be very interesting. So that's really the main races I recommend. A Wood Elf could be good, though, for the speed and the penetration uh, and, the, and the stamina and stamina recovery that would allow you to run a different Munda Stone. Definitely an option nonetheless, but that's my suggested races. Uh, let's go into the Munda Stone. So we have the Serpent on, like I said, if you are a Wood Elf, you can probably go with the Warrior here, but I think pound for pound, the Serpent is better than the Warrior. Uh, I mean, you get much more sustain from this versus the Warrior. So this is kind of why I prefer the Orc. It's probably not gonna be a negligible difference though. The only thing is, is you're gonna get a little bit more uh, speed and penetration being a Wood Elf, but you're gonna have a little bit less health than the Orc does. So for my attributes, we have 64 points into health. People may laugh, but this is not a joke. 
Um, the main reason why we have this many points in health is because we are using Lava Foot. We don't get any health for this, so kind of counterbalance that with our attributes. Stamina really is not important in this patch at all. Um, I mean, it's just really going to help you with more sustain, but we have plenty enough recovery as is to be all right. I mean, people are going to kind of be a little bit hesitant with this max stamp pool, but trust me, you'll be just fine. It maybe take a little bit of adjusting, but I think overall you'll be okay. So for the consumables, obviously we're using Lava Foot. This is by far the best food in my opinion. Uh, RTM, you could work here. You'd have to drop a little bit more points in health. I tried to give a health to 30k, but it didn't quite make it there, obviously. 28.7 is okay. I, I feel okay there. Uh, I would not go any lower than that, though. I would not go any lower than that. So for the potions and whatnot, um, immovable health and stamina are my favorites. They allow you to go offensive and not get stunned, so you can't get hit by an end cap and get knocked on the ground. But also I use tripods every now and then if I need a little bit more magic, but uh, I prefer to use these. I use these like 99% of the time. Definitely just help you in overall PVP, allows you to go offensive without being uh, worried about being stunned. So now let's get into the gear. So we have Vatrin Perfected Great Sword Back Bar. I would like to maybe run defending here. I haven't tried it. I think defending would be better. I've been kind of getting away from powered. I like it in certain aspects, but the main problem I have with powered is if I'm not on that bar, I'm not getting the healing bonus. Defending, as soon as I swap bars, I'm getting that damage mitigation. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, have 2,000 armor or 10,000 armor. I mean, I'm gonna get that mitigation regardless. Um, whenever I'm on that bar, the powered only works whenever I'm healing, and you're not healing all the time. So defending is up more more or less. It's kind of how I prefer to play. Uh, I want to build that has all of his damage up all the time. Um, more often than not, that's the best way to build. Uh, but definitely powered is an option. I really like it, but I pro would probably pref prefer defending. So what this set does is whenever we have rally active, um, whenever we use a stamina ability, uh, we can proc this and gives us a lot of weapon damage and then does a uh, 10,000 physical damage proc whenever we medium wave. So on the front bar, it's a no brainer. Uh, Deadly. Deadly is just an amazing set. I never really liked it. It's getting nerfed a little bit next patch, but I think it'll still be just fine. I think it's like 18%. Uh, so it's no big deal, really. Um, but, but what this is kind of going under the radar is our rating oppression will get buffed by Deadly. So it could actually end up being better uh, than what we have currently right now. So we'll go, we'll go into all the new stuff next patch, but um, definitely Deadly is by far probably the best in slot. I've always been a hater on Deadly. I've never really liked it. I always preferred Stoons, and I'm kind of getting away from that simply because Binding Javelin just hits so much harder than Top and Charge, and I can actually go offensive, and there's like maybe one or two jabs when they're actually dead. So Deadly is by far my favorite here. We're running Nernhone Mace, Sharpen Offhand Deadly Mace. Uh, shock damage enchant for the vulnerability and we are using a absorb stamina enchant i do like this uh, this increases the chance to apply the sundered status effect which gives them minor breach since we're not using power of light right now because our max stamina pool is so low uh, this definitely helps us keep up that uh, extra penetration on them um, so for our monster set we are using a one piece balor by far probably the best you could use the blood spawn here or next patch you can use a set called Magnet Incarnate. That thing it gives you, or I think it's Magma Incarnate, I'm not sure. But it gives you a uh, Mac Recovery and Sam Recovery. So that's definitely going to overtake a Blood Spawn for the One Piece. But definitely blo but definitely Balor is, is really good here. You could run any One Piece of weapon and spell damage doesn't make a difference. And for the next set, um, this kind of inspired me from my Stamp Sort to make this build. I tried out a few different specs for like the Fire with, with Deadlands. But this is just a really good set. I think th this flew under my radar coming into Blackwood. Uh, we get weapon damage, weapon damage, max stamina, weapon damage. I mean, this set is very close to New Moon Acolyte. And you don't get the cost increase. As you guys already know, I don't like cost increase like with the Vampire. So New Moon really isn't my friend. Uh, plus, we get this pretty nasty proc. You know, it's not as often as I would like it to be. But we're not getting any of the drawbacks from New Moon. We're getting a lot of damage here, which is going to scale very well with our healing power and all that. And we get a nice little proc, you know, every now and then with our Vatrin. That's really the main reason why we're using this here. I uh, just overall a really good set. Uh, I like it. I really recommend you guys get it. It's going to be hard to find the M pen pieces now. Whenever I bought this a few weeks ago, it was like 2K for M pen. Now I think everybody's making the one shot stamp sork and it's all over the place. 
So yeah, trade wise, I recommend getting M Pen. I like the Invigorating though. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, this is kind of a little bit weird for me, but this is the only piece I could find in these traits for, for now. M Pen would be preferred. Also, like well fitted too for the uh, cost reduction to sprint and roll dodge. So ideally, uh, I would probably run like seven M Pen. I think would probably be the best. But you can mix and mix and intermatch the well fitted and invigorating. Um, so I am using seven medium. This is by far the best for me. This patch. Next patch will be a different story though, because we're not getting all this weapon crit. As you guys can see here, we have 33.4% weapon crit, which is fairly significant. Next patch, we're going to be losing on all of that because of the medium armor passive. They're changing the dexterity to give us critical damage done and critical healing done, and changing this to the prodigy passive to give uh, the light armor weapon crit. So. We'll have to change your build around next patch, but this is definitely a solid build for you guys to run this patch. And then jewelry, we have deadly infused uh, weapon damage, a deadly ring robust. I definitely recommend you keep this robust uh, just to get a little bit more stamina. And we're using a sand recovery glyph. And then we have ring of the wild hunt. Yes, yes, you want to try this. I'm telling you guys, you will love this. This is insane movement speed, 22% while in combat with 15% from the one piece and then 7% from the swift trait definitely recommend this next patch we could drop the swift trait entirely and run the cp passive celerity which is probably what i'm going to do and then maybe change this to infused possibly or maybe even leave it swift i don't know i don't know yet um but i, I definitely think we could probably swap this to infuse and run the celerity cp passive so for enchants on the gear try stack glyphs on the big pieces you definitely want this because we need to get our health as high as possible and then we have stamina glyphs on all the small pieces to give us the most max stamina possible All right, so now that we got the gear out of the way, let's go buff up and let's see our weapon damage. So we're just gonna get a combat here and proc our Vatron. Nothing crazy here. Oh, we got our Vatron up now. So we'll just rune focus and rally, nothing else. We have 2,380 stem recovery, 6,756 weapon damage. Weapon damage, I think went up to like 7,500 uh, with, with continuous attack up, but with just a light attack up, we have 7.2. So definitely uh, we have a lot of weapon damage on this build. Penetration is okay. It could be higher, but um, we do have uh, couch drops, so we do have a little bit more pen. Uh, let's check out our buff stats with the potion. So here is our fully buff stats: 2,800 stem recovery. Our stem recovery actually goes up more because of our skill with rune focus or whatever it's called, restoring focus, giving us basically like 480 stem recovery. Um, so that is the stat sheet. So now let's go into the skills. So like I said earlier, I want to keep this simple. So I never really liked Camo Hunter because I felt like it was a waste, but this makes this build simple. Like you get 5% more damage for flanking. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's free damage increase. This gives us weapon damage for using Camo Hunter. They're also changing this around next patch. So it could be a little bit better to detect Night Blades, um, but we'll have to see on that. I definitely could be worth it though. I really like this here. It just keeps it simple. Gives us that savagery up all the time. Uh, not when we had to hit jabs. So it's definitely a really, really good spot here. You could use Blood Craze. I know we're using Deadly, but uh, I prefer this. I I'm telling you guys, keep it simple. Don't don't make it too complicated. Because what happens is if you have if you have Blood Craze here, you're just going to be trying to put that on them rather than going into jabs. Because you think you have to hit Blood Craze because you have to get the damage dot on them. And I just don't think it's worth it, uh, in my honest opinion. Vigor, this is a, a must. I mean, it's it's amazing. Gives you good healing over time. Really helps stamina builds be superior and outnumber PvP. Uh, just a really, really great skill. Next, we have Caltrops. Next patch, probably going to swap to Power of the Light since it's getting a pretty substantial buff. But I am liking Caltrops here. I'm really not going to lie. Um, this thing is really nice. Gives us a good uh, AoE Major Breach and does a decent dot. Nothing crazy, but uh, it's just really solid. I, I like it for pulling on Night Blades right now. I don't think next patch it will. So definitely use this while you can, but I think next patch power of light is just going to be better, 100%. Uh, even though it doesn't give you the major breach, this is going to be a very bursty skill, copying up to 50% of your, your of your damage done to them, and it's going to be based off of our weapon and spell damage, not our max stamina. So it's definitely going to hit a lot harder than it does right now. Next we have binding javelin. I've always had my really dislike for this skill. I've always preferred uh, top lane charge. But the damage is just so much higher with Binding Javelin, so much higher. I know it says 3.5k on the topple, um, but it doesn't hit for that much. 
uh, Bonnie Javelin goes through the resistances, so it doesn't matter how much resistance they have. This completely negates it, so it really allows for some good burst potential. This thing hits for nearly between 3-4k, and then we go right into a jab, so it really increases our, our burst potential way more than Teleport Charge does, and also doesn't have to force us to run a different morph of Restoring Focus. We can always use um, the, the, the main one. We don't have to use the Magic Recovery one anymore, or use the Smoke Bear on food. We can really spec into Stam Recovery. So next we have Biting Jabs, Tooltips 4.5k, unbuffed, um, freaking got crazy damage on our jabs, I think it's like 5k, it's just crazy. Uh, this thing slaps so hard. The main thing that makes um, Biting Jabs so powerful, or Templar in general, is the Burning Light passive. Whenever we deal damage with a jab, uh, we can get closer and closer to that proc, which really helps burst uh, burst potential. And I really think that that's why Power of Light is going to be better next patch versus Caltrops, because it can allow for two bursts. Biting jabs is a no-brainer. It's hard to use though. Definitely, you're gonna have to. If you play in console, definitely recommend you put this on your R1 or your right bumper or left bumper, whatever you prefer. Xbox, PS4. Uh, it, this allows you to jab and move your character with your right analog stick, um, so you don't have to like press your square button or press triangle to hit jabs. You can keep moving your camera character around like this and jab at the same time. This is the main tip uh, for all samplers out there. Crescent Sweep, 100% no-brainer. This thing absolutely wrecks people. Cheap ultimate, uh, insane burst potential. This thing will literally clap people when you go into a Crescent and the jabs, their, melt, their health bars will melt, I, I guarantee. Unless they're a tank uh, or have some insane mitigation, this thing is just gonna hit people like crazy. I mean, I'm hitting like 10, 11K Crescent Sweeps on people. Obviously, they're a little bit squishier, but it's still some crazy damage nonetheless. Back bar, race against time. I think this is a must. I like the on-demand speed uh, with my Ring of the Wild Hunt. We can freaking zoom like crazy. I mean, we're really, really fast. Um, also, the snare removal immediately is, is amazing. Uh, it's just an overall great skill. The great damage bonus is, is also nice. So definitely, Race Against Time is a must for me. Extended Ritual, this is a no-brainer. Gets rid of negative effects. You know, it cleanses off poisons, curses, uh, all that stuff. You definitely want this. Now, people may say I'm double dipping here with the speed, but I really don't think I am. I'm getting the mitigation from this, and I'm getting the removal and on-demand speed from Race Against Time. This is definitely nice, though, to have that little bit of movement speed. Uh, if we, for example, if we have the movement speed and we just cleanse, then we're going to keep the same speed, and we don't have to ha hit Race Against Time. So I definitely like this. You could, you could do this, but this is keeping the build simple. This is the main thing. You could go with quick cloak on the front bar and then put caltrops back which would be okay theoretically i just think that i don't know i i think that the the quick cloak is a waste of stamina whenever we could just get the buff for like 38 seconds with uh elude and not even worry about it and just have that mitigation up so we don't have to constantly be keeping that up I feel like it's just better for me personally and just my preferred playstyle. And for our armor buff for storing focus, this gives us a ton of stamina sustain. We get a heal while we're inside of the rune. Uh, it's just overall great skill. I love the way they changed this. It's actually really, really good. Uh, it's very loaded skill. I think this really carries Templars in general. This, this skill right here gives us so much sustain and so much healing. Now we have Rally. No brainer here. Gives us weapon damage, gives us minor endurance, procs our Vatron whenever we hit Rally and we're in combat, we hit stamina skills and we're procking those five sacks of Vatron. So it gives us more weapon damage and uh, more weapon damage on top of that and more weapon damage on top of that with Rally. So overall, you definitely want this on your build. And then we have Barrier Back Bar. The main reason why we use this is for the extra mag recovery, but you could use anything here. You could use Temper Guard. I don't think Temper Guard is worth it because we already get... Um, the minor protection from jabs so if we hit this we're getting minor protection for like six seconds um we already have the psychic block uh with the race against time there's really no point uh we we could use honestly we could use Dawnbreaker back there if we wanted to just have a different like, ultimate a little bit more weapon damage a little bit more healing but uh it, it's really dependent on you definitely may slot da slot Dawnbreaker back here to get people off of us you know it could be nice to use back there so that is all for the skills very simple like i said you could change anything you want here i, I made a few suggestions but this is this my ideally preferred spec that i've been running so let's go into the champion points now uh again this is my preferred way to play uh i've been testing 
these for quite some time. So my slotables are biting aura. This increases our jabs, our crescent sweep, uh, all that stuff, getting some insane uh, area of effect damage increase. Mastered arm for the direct damage. So this is going to buff our jabs, our crescent sweep, initial damage. Just some crazy burst here with, with this. Then we have untamed aggression. This is going to buff our deadlands and our vase for 2H. Also, it's going to give us more weapon damage so we can get more healing power. I like this here. I really do. Uh, you could change this though if you want. It's a little bit more mitigation, but I really don't run any mitigation at all. Next, I have the focus mending. I think this is really underrated. This 10% healing is freaking phenomenal. Uh, this buffs your rally, your vigor, uh, your rune focus. I don't think it buffs your cleanse though, but overall, this is definitely a must uh, for me personally. This healing power is insane. I use this on a lot of my builds now. It's really underrated, I think. If you don't want to use Untamed Aggression, you could use Fighting Finesse for the critical damage and critical healing done. You could use Unassailable. You could also use uh, the Resilience if you want, but we don't need it. We're so fast. We have so much mitigation through that that it's really unseen that we really don't need any mitigation from our CP, even in this high burst meta that we're in. I know it's crazy, but definitely it's more of an advanced um, build, but definitely you guys will like this a lot. Obviously, get all of your, your passives uh, if you have the ch champion points, but focus more on the stamina ones if you don't. Um, and so, yeah, that's a blue tree. So for the red tree, we have balanced vitality, rejuvenation, unchained, and juggernaut. These are by far the best for this patch. They're going to change next patch quite a bit. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the best. They're nerfing rejuvenation. Uh, they're nerfing juggernaut. So we're going to drop those. We're going to change a little bit around. But this is definitely ideally what I would recommend for you guys to run. Overall, this is the best for this patch. Obviously, get all your passives here uh, that you can. Obviously, focus more on these first, Tumbling and Defiance to get that cost reduction. And then try to get to Heroes Vigor as fast as you can to get that. And then get some Hasty and Sprinter. That's my um, ideally preferred way to get as much as you can from the red tree. The green is really irrelevant. The main ones are going to be Breakfall and Steadfast Enchantment. That's the best uh, passives here. But for slotables, we have Rationer, Seed's Blessing. This is definitely really nice when we're outside of combat and we can move really quickly. Then we have the farming stuff, Master Gather and Plentiful Harvest. If you want to go full combat, you can go Liquid Efficiency to save money on potions. But that is my ideal passives here. You could go, if you want to sneak around, you could go Fleet Phantom. But um, this is my preferred red tree or gr green tree CP passives. So that is all for the build. I hope this helps you guys out. Definitely let me know down in the comment section if you guys like this build or not. If you tried it, definitely come back later and let me know. I definitely would really appreciate that. If this video helps you in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. And that's it for me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.